Hey everybody, it's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and this is Music School. Let me begin by saying that this is in no way a paid endorsement, but the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the most recognizable elements in all of rock and roll, there are few things more iconic than a Marshall stack. Whether it's Pete Townsend, Jay Maskis, Jimi Hendrix, Johnny Ramone, or the guys from Slayer, the name and image of Marshall has become absolutely synonymous with rock and roll. However, both the name and brand have a very long and interesting history to them, going all the way back to the early 1960s and a London-based drummer named Jim Marshall. After a successful career as a drummer, he opened up a music shop in London, mainly selling drum equipment. After a number of people inquired about it, he finally started selling guitars and guitar amps. And most of the early amps he sold were made by Fender, as they were without question the most popular around the world. And it was actually the 4x10 Fender bass man that served as the inspiration for the first Marshall amps. Working with his shop repairman, as well as a friend who was an electrician, the trio created a number of different prototypes before arriving at their first successful unit. The main difference in the Marshall prototypes were that the amplification unit was separate from the speakers, and they also used a closed back on the cabinet unit. This new amp also used different circuitry and valves on the interior, but the most significant change was the fact that they used a filter after the volume control. This allowed for what's called overdrive, and that in many ways is the Marshall sound. Throughout the early and mid 1960s, Jim Marshall took a number of different directions with his amplifiers while he was trying to cut costs and come up with new ideas. This eventually led to a conversation with a man who often frequented his store, a young guitarist named Eric Clapton. During this discussion, Clapton asked Marshall if it was possible for him to create a smaller amplification unit that was a combo unit as well as utilized tremolo. This would lead to one of the most famous amps in history, the Marshall Bluesbreaker. Also around this time, the early Plexi models of Marshall amps were introduced, and they offered far more volume than almost anything else in the world. After delivering four of these Plexi units to the Who's Pete Townsend, he placed a smaller Marshall unit on top of it, and it was at this moment that the iconic Marshall stack image was born. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the Marshall Company would create a number of variations on the same general visual concept, adding and changing the interior construction and components, as well as working with concepts like splitting channels, diode clipping, allowing guitarists to achieve a far wider and more customizable sound. Even nearly five decades after the first Marshall prototypes were created, the overall visual presentation of the amp remains almost exactly the same. And from classic photographs to current generation rockers, you can argue that the image of the Marshall stack is just just as essential to rock and roll as the guitars which they amplify. Oh!